First of all, Cindy, thank you for that walk down memory lane. <laughs> uh, there'll be a new Twitter handle out there, old Mike Petrilli, who will hang out with old Diane Ravitch and uh, <laughs> quote our old uh, speeches to one another. This is great. Uh, we, we did a little checking. Uh, yeah, good, good. Yes. By the way, that was during my service during uh, Secretary Page's uh, term. I, see, I was right on the party line back then in 2003. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me say at the outset that what I'm going to propose here today is not going to transform America's education system. It won't propel the United States above our international competitors. It's not going to eliminate our stubborn achievement gaps. It's not going to do any of those things because for better or for worse, the federal government cannot effectuate that kind of change. Um, this is not for an ideological reasons, but for a structural reason. We know that Uncle Sam is at least three steps removed from the classroom, and all the carrots and sticks in the world won't allow him to right everything that's wrong in our schools. Now, Cindy made the point that the federal government has done a lot of good things in education, and that's right. When you're talking about access for African American students, for students with disabilities, for girls playing sports, on and on, we're talking about access, yes, the federal government has played a critical role. When you're talking about excellence, though, it's too hard for the federal government to do good because it's simply too far away from the problem. So I would argue that the wrong way to think about federal policy and education is to identify the myriad problems that we have in our education system and then dream up federal solutions to those problems, as if Congress could just pass a law and magically things would change in the real world and they would happen without unintended consequences. I think the right way to think about federal education policy instead is to figure out what is Uncle Sam capable of doing, and then making sure that he does those things well. Now, I would disagree with some of my friends on the right, uh, you know, Jennifer and some of the colleagues at Heritage, uh, who I think basically argue that there's very little the federal government can do, maybe n basically nothing the federal government can do right in education. Um, I think that we have some good examples of things the federal government can do well. For example, thoughtfully constructed competitive grant programs like the Teacher Incentive Fund that's really moved the ball down the field in terms of merit pay and different kinds of uh, strategies around teachers. Um, but I also strongly disagree with my friends on the left, like Cindy and her colleagues at CAP, who seem to think that Uncle Sam's capacity to do good is practically unlimited. Now here at Fordham, we've been talking about something called reform realism. What we've been saying is that, yes, Washington should promote education reform, but we've got to be realistic about what it can do and that it has, there are real limitations on its power and its influence. Because while Washington can force states and school districts to do things that they don't want to do, it cannot force them to do those things well. Uh, and in the most difficult issues of education reform, from turning around failing schools to creating new options for kids to improving teacher quality, all of those things have to be done well. And under the best case scenario, they're hard to do, much less when they're being done under duress. So what does this mean for federal policy around accountability? The two main questions. Should Washington prescribe a school rating system, like the system we have today, AYP, right? Or should there be more flexibility at the state level? And number two, should Washington mandate certain interventions in failing schools? Uh, and can it do these things without lots of perverse consequences? And to my eye, it's pretty obvious that Washington cannot uh, demand and be prescriptive about those things without perverse consequences. You look at AYP. No, nobody will come out right now today and defend AYP with its Byzantine rules and, uh, you know. At the same time, if you read the papers from CAP, Education Trust, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, and other left of center groups, did you get that? Did you get that? <laughs> yes? Boom. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, that, uh, what you will find. But, you know, what you will find is that they basically describe a rating system that looks a lot like AYP. You know, a deadline for getting all kids across proficiency line and, you know, Soviet-style annual goals and measures and all these boxes you have to check. I mean, son of AYP in their vision would look a lot like AYP. Um, and I don't think uh, that's workable. And then we talk about federally mandated interventions. Um, and we all know this has been a total flop. Um, and it's not because the federal law wasn't prescriptive enough, but because the architects of NCLB never really figured out how, what, what was the theory of action where the federal government was going to be able to get the states to do the things they needed to do and the districts to do the things they needed to do. Even in issues like school choice and supplemental services that, you know, the implementers of the law believed very much in, but we found we did not have very effective levers to make happen or happen well. All right, so what do we need to do instead? I propose three things, transparency, transparency, and transparency. Okay, that transparency is something the federal government can do well uh, and make happen in the real world. It needs to ask for states to make school results 
transparent, as well as school finances transparent. And this, I think, would make a great contribution. So it starts by making sure we have rigorous standards and tests so that you can believe the data, all these da this data that's coming out, that you don't have this problem with the gaming, you don't have the low cut scores. Um, and the Common Core Initiative has made a huge uh, contribution here already. Uh, then I think it is reasonable for the feds to ask the states to have some kind of rating system. So to take all this data and then provide a user-friendly signal to parents and educators saying, how's your school doing? The Florida A to F model is, is a great one uh, that if states want to do that, that seems like it makes sense. But instead of trying to prescribe this from Washington, you know, we all get together and try to say, okay, how much does subgroup performance have to count and value added versus growth versus let's all get in the room and come up with some crazy formula that's going to be on the books for 10 years. You have to trust the states on this one and say, here's, here's the elements. You need to include growth. You need to include subgroup performance. There's a couple other key things, but you design it. And here's the thing. You may not like what they design. Uh, some, some states, for example, may not put as much emphasis on achievement gaps as you might like. So here's another proposal. Ask the states to make all the data that goes into their school rating system transparent and available to the public. Protect student confidentiality, but otherwise make it public so that if Education Trust wants to come along and do a, a achievement gap index for every school in the country that's in a common core state, it could do so. And it could build its own rating system of how schools are doing on those measures. Great schools could update its rating. Anybody could come up with its own rating if you wanted to and make sure that you had a way to look at these schools. Um, and then finally, intervening in schools that aren't measuring up. And this is where we really need to have a big wallop of humility. Uh, because, look, none of us know really how to turn around failing schools. We have very little uh, track record of success here. We did a study just a few months ago that found that out of all the low-performing schools in 10 states, uh, if you came back five years later, only 1% of them had gotten dramatically better. Okay, we don't know how to do this. So to have the federal government say, well, we're going to damn man that every school goes through, you know, low-performing schools get turned around, I think for the most part we're kidding ourselves. If Congress can't help itself, fine, we have a competitive grant program. States and districts that want to do that turnaround work can apply for the money. So again, that's, that's where you have it. Is this going to fix America's schools? No. Uh, but neither will anybody else's plan, I would argue, uh, because the federal government can't do that. And I think I should get points for being honest. <laughs> Thanks.